welcome to my channel so in this video I'm going to uh, cover the solution for this uh, legal question called number of items and uh, at the same time um, I'm going to briefly go through the general steps we should follow in the real interview at the end of this video so uh, before we start the real content for today uh, I would really appreciate that if you can help subscribe this channel because this can help me to grow thanks a lot um, so let's get started uh, let's read through this problem. Given the chemical formula, so return the count of each item. So atomic uh, atomic uh, element always starts with an uppercase character, then zero or more of the lowercase characters representing the name, one or more digits representing that uh, element's count may follow if the count is greater than one. So if the count is one, then no digit follow. So two formulas concatenated together to produce another formula. For example, H2O2, HE3MG4 is also a formula. Okay, so a formula plus uh, placed in the parentheses and the count is also a formula. For example, this one. So given a formula, return the count of all elements as a string in the following format. So the first name. Uh, it's in sorted order followed by its count so if, if it's the count is more than one then you're going to print, print the count otherwise we are just going to make it and, uh, followed by the second name uh, in the sorted order followed by its count and so on and so forth so let's see for this one mgoh2 so h2 mg so because mg is one so we just uh, made the one so o2 something like that so for the constraints it's said that uh, the formula is never going to be empty so it's only going to contain english letters digit or open or closing parentheses and formula is always going to be valid so it seems like there's no room there isn't a room of to, for us to find the ash case so it's mostly about the general algorithm so let's go through this piece of code and uh, at the same time i'm going to go through the algorithm uh, go through the general solution so the general approach is to uh, use a stack to solve this problem so essentially when you encounter open parentheses um, you just uh, push it into the stack when you encounter a closing parentheses then you're going to um, to pop the elements within the stack until you hit the open parentheses and then you interpret the the count that comes after the closing parentheses and then um, you will need to uh, multiply the count after the closing parentheses to everything uh, between the open and parentheses oh, between the open and pr closing parentheses but let's go through this piece of code together so you may have a better idea after we go through this so um, initially we have the stack which um, the, the stack contains item count so here we define a helper class which is item count so two things one is the item which is uh, uh, which is uh, the string item and the other one is a count so like how many items are there and then uh, we have a helper function here to tell whether the item count is a parenthesis or not so um, so first of all we have the index which is index within the formula we are currently looking at and uh, we get the corresponding character at the index so if it is open parentheses we are just going to put it into the stack uh, so this is a special item count uh, which has item as uh, uh, open parentheses and then um, if um, the character is a closing parenthesis then what we would do is we will first define a list and then we will dump everything from the stack uh, until we hit a open parenthesis and then if we hit open parenthesis then we just break so everything within the list currently is between the current closing parenthesis and the corresponding matching uh, open parenthesis so all the items within there so okay so this is for debugging purpose we don't need to do that 
So plus plus index. Um, this is uh, we are going to plus plus the index between uh, because uh, the car currently this is a closing parenthesis. We just need to uh, just need to plus plus the index to skip it. Then uh, we don't know. Um, so for example, for this one, OH two. So we don't know how many of the OH are there. Uh, so we need to get a corresponding count. So we initialize the count as one, and then um, then we are going to. So if if the index, if the current index, um, the the cur current character and the current indexing formula is a digit, then we are going to parse. Uh, we are going to try to parse the number that comes up after this uh, closing parenthesis. So we will say, okay, so this is a get count. So get count is a helper function here. So let me get you. Okay, so this is a get count. Get count essentially it's a helper function, two things, the formula and the stat the start index. So we try to go through we try to uh, we try to start from the start index until we hit a uh, hit the end of the formula or we hit uh, a non-digit character. So essentially, we are trying to get the two uh, out of the uh, two as a substring out of the uh, the formula. So you can see that uh, we have the string builder started as empty. Then we add the character at index. And then we set end index as plus one. And every time, uh, if it is a digit, we just break. Otherwise, we keep appending to the string builder. And finally, we return uh, this. So this is get count. So we call the get count and we get the corresponding counts. So for example, for this one, we get the count as two. And we are going to uh, multiply the corresponding count uh, for each of the items in the list. So for example, for this one in the list, we have O1 and H1, and we have the count as two. So after this, uh, we go through this, we will have O2 and H2 to be put pushed back into the stack. So this is this else branch. Otherwise, if it's not a press, if it's not open or closing processes, then it should be a uh, it should be starting with uh, the uppercase uh, character. So we are going to call the guide item. So the guide item is also a helper function, similarly to get count, is to trying to get the corresponding item. So we see that so we have the string builder here. Start at the index. We of hand the the character here into the string builder and uh, if it is a if it's not alphabet it means um, that's the end of the 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 atom so if it is uh, uppercase then it's in it is another item so we also need to break otherwise we keep appending it so finally we are going to return the item here so for example for this one mg we are going to return on uh, mg uh, in as a string so here we get the item and then um, we plus equal to the item length which means we, we, we need to update the index um, so that we can keep iterating um, so int as equal count as equal to one but uh, we not we are not sure how many of the the corresponding item there so for example if it is k4 there are four of them actually so we initialize count as one, but in case the, there is a number coming up through this character, we are going to um, we are going to pass parse the count and uh, get the get get the corresponding count of the the item, and then we are going to add it into the stack. So for example, for this one K four, we are going to first pass K, and then we are going to pass four, and finally we we put item count with uh, the the pair as k k4 into the stack so that's essentially how this piece of code is going to work and finally we are going to we, we call this helper function to parse the stack into a string so here um, we define a tree map because tree map the key is sorted so um, we are trying to uh, grab everything and get the aggregation for each of the con for each of the item and then after that we are going to go through every entry in the map 
and then put it uh, append it into the the string builder uh, finally we return the, the string uh, represented by the string builder so that's pretty much it the runtime is going to be all of uh, n square because of the open parentheses closing parentheses stuff um, so oh when i say n square n is the length of the formula and space wise it's going to be all of n so uh, that's pretty much it about the solution and uh, for a real interview um usually the first step you start with is not to start coding so don't jump into the coding part too quickly the first step is always try to understand the question uh, talk loud if you have anything you don't understand and also think about the edge cases and then you will need to uh, think about the ideas how to solve this problem think loud and uh, talk with your interviewer uh, discuss about runtime space analysis and also get an agreement before you start coding and uh, after you get an agreement the next step for you to do is to do some real code uh, to uh, turn your idea into solid code so take care about the correctness readability and also don't be too slow and uh, after you're done with coding please don't forget to do testing so that's it for uh, this uh, video if you like this video please help subscribe this channel i'll see you next time Thanks for watching.